Hi everybody, Matt Bernie or Mike Beer taking a look at the late pick four sequence on Queen's Plate Day up at Woodbine. This sequence is races 10 through 13, and guess what? It kicks off with the Queen's Plate. And then you've also got another stakes race in there. So races 10 through 13, first race is scheduled to go off at 536. It is the big one, the million dollar Queen's Plate for three-year-olds. We talked about it before we came in here. Yeah. You could spend $500 on this thing and not hit it. Yeah, which I suppose is a good thing. It's a great thing. It's for just, a pick four, yeah. it's just, it's a very difficult sequence. It's very, very difficult. It almost feels like, um, it feels like you're going to have to do some spreading. I feel that way anyway. You have to do some spreading, and then you're probably going to have to get a little lucky to hit yeah. it. Um, but guess what? Um, it's a three hundred thousand dollar guaranteed pool. You can play it in twenty cent increments, yeah. and there's a lot of way, different ways that you can go. And if you can get to the right horse in one or two of these races, I mean, you're going to get paid this thing. This this whole sequence, beginning with the Queen's Plate, is wide open. How many are you using here in this opening leg, and in what sort of variation if you're playing some sort of yeah. ticket maker or just playing backups in general? Yeah, I don't even know that in this race I'm going to go mains and backups. I'm just going to use four horses in here. We talked about it a lot in the stakes preview. I'm against the two Phillies um, coming out of the Woodbine Oaks. I think they could both potentially win, but I'm against both of them, and I'm against the, both of Mark Cassie's sources. I'm not sure. going to use any of those four in this race. Who I am going to use, I'm going to use the one channel uh, maker. I just think he's a logical horse in here. I don't know about distance for him, but I'm going to use him. Um, I'm going to use the eight, Malibu Secret, who I'm a big fan of and who's a big price on the morning line. I'm going to use Aurora Way, the 11, who was my top pick in the race, who I think has all the upside. And I'm going to use the horse that you like, Tis a Slam, um, who I just feel like has a chance to take another step forward here in his third start off the layoff. We're using similar horses. The only one that I'm adding, I'm taking out the eight just because I, it just left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth with the Malcolm Pierce horse, okay. although I think he can certainly run right. and again in a wide open edition of this this race he has every right to make a, a step forward I am going to use the filly that won the Woodbine Oaks right. Holy Helen and just because she was very impressive that day now yep. I don't think she lays over this field like some are suggesting but I mean I, I think she's a very logical yeah, contender in one. here so my mains are going to be the 12 to the slam the horse that I like the 11 the horse that you're going with Aurora Way Another main is going to be the one channel maker because I do think yeah. there's a real scenario where we're going to look back and say the Marine was the key race and that, you know what, that super tap it has a lot of ability yeah. and this horse was a mile clear of the third place runner in there. And then my uh, my backup, though, is going to be the three Holy Helena yeah. in the opening leg of this late pick four sequence. We move on to race number 11. One of the, the oddities of the racing up at Woodbine, you have maiden <laughs> optional claimers. Yeah. They're not all maiden claiming. Right. They're not all maiden special weight. This is the kind of race where you can be had or you can't be had. Um, it's a full field, and there's not a lot of good form. Maiden optional 40s. How many are you using? Where do you go? Yeah, this is not an easy race for me. I'm, I am decided to stay mostly towards the outside mm -hmm. in here. Um, 10, 11, and 12 were my main three. I just feel like they're, they're all pretty logical horses. Sure. You know, I don't think there's anything that outlandish about them. They're three of the shorter prices on the line. I'm going to use 10, 11, 12, and I'm going to use um, the four. Um, I just feel like that horse, second back off the layoff as a three-year-old this year, second time Lasix, I just think that's probably the right kind of horse to be included in the pick four. Just because this entire sequence is as difficult as it is, I feel like it is one of those things. You either put a ton into it and yeah. you spread, or you got to kind of get a little bit narrow and yeah. skinny. And this is the leg that I'm going to try to get a little narrow a little bit skinny. I'm going to use the four Cobra Sophie for all the reasons you just laid out. Second off the bench, second start as a three-year-old. I still think there's a forward move there. Yeah. I'm also going to use the six Flashy Knickers. I know the connections aren't prolific first out of the box or anything like that, but right. you get Rafael Hernandez, one of the leading riders up there. The McLean's Musics, they're clipping at about 21% with first-time starters, yeah. and in a field where there's not a lot of proven ability, yeah. I'm fine taking a flyer that, you know what, if all of a sudden this horse comes out and can run a 70 in his debut or a 65, oh, yeah. he's got a shot to win this thing. So those are the only two that I'm going to use in here. The four and the six. We move on to race number 12, the third leg of this late pick four sequence, $300,000 guaranteed. It is the Barley, the Charlie Barley. One mile on the turf course, you and I both agree. Yeah. If you need to get narrow, maybe this is the leg you do it in. I mean, it just sort of seems like a lot of people will sort of try and, and especially when they want to spread in the other legs, will try and just make the two major look win. I mean, it's, he's a very logical horse shipping up here for Pletcher and getting some class relief. And he's actually run you know, pretty well in most of his races. If you forget about the, tur or the dirt race, the Fountain of Youth, I don't know why they tried that. It didn't work out. He had a real trip in his one star prior to that. I just feel like he's way the horse to beat in here. I'm going to mostly make him um, the only horse I use in here. One backup that I'll use. On, if I play a backup ticket, it'll be with the 8 Yorkton. Um, 
I know his two turf races so far are the two worst races he's ever run by far. Mm. Um, but I don't really want to hold the cup and saucer against him. And then the other turf races at Gulfstream, um, he ran terrible on the dirt at Gulfstream, and he ran terrible on the turf at Gulfstream. And now he's back at Woodbine, and he's really improved since they got him back up here. I'll give him another chance. I think he's a good horse. Most of mine, if not all of my play, is going to go through Made You Look. Yeah. Now, maybe I'm a little bit overrating of this horse because I've always thought that he was yeah. actually quite good. But you just look at the horses that he has run against. He has run against so much better horses than any of these horses he here has. in this race. Now, I suppose if you want to play devil's advocate, could you look at it and say it's a bad thing that he's here because he's had plenty of other races to run in yeah. for Pletcher. He could have run in, what, the Pennine Ridge? Is that the, the yeah. local prep for the Belmont Absolutely. Derby? He could have run in a number of different places, and he's here. Is that a good thing or a bad thing to you? Yeah, I don't know. I or mean, I did, Yeah, I, I sort of didn't put that much thought into it. Pletcher ships him up for this race, and you know what? Whether he could have run in you know, a, a maybe a more high-profile race down in the States, man, that's probably true, but this is where he is, and he just looks so logical in this race. I, I mean, I don't see any way you look at this race and feel like he's... Maybe he won't win, but I don't think you can look at this race and go, well, he's a real vulnerable favorite. I mean, he sort of stands out in this field. If you get through the first three legs, and you thought the first maiden optional claimer, <laughs> leg number two, was, was hard enough, oh the nightcap is an absolute scramble. And you know what? To make things better, you've got 14 and then also 15th on the also eligible list. So you're going to get a full field or pretty darn close to it. Um, uh, boy, you've got a lot of first-time starters. You've got a lot of horses yeah. that you know, maybe they're lightly raced and there could be a forward move in here. Again, if you get to this leg, congratulations, but you're still not home. you got a long yeah. way to go. Who are you using? Yeah, if, I get to the, if I get this far, I'm just going to cross my fingers <laughs> and close my eyes and, and hope. hold my breath, everything that you can do, and just see what happens. Um, I have two positions on the race. One of them is the June 11th race that the 8, 9, and 10 are all coming out of. I don't need those horses. Yep. I, I'm going to stay away from that race. I don't like that race. I don't want them. Um, I am using the two, okay. discrete Dan, dropping and turning back in distance for this race. I'm using the three, who just seems really logical in this race and has speed. And I do think this horse has improved off the claim, even though he hasn't won yet. Yep. And uh, I'm going to use the 12. Um, ole, ole, ole. Second time starter, got outrun early in his debut and was running at the end at five furlongs and then galloped out um, pretty well in that race. Now he gets the six to work with. So I'm going to use those three and I'm going to use one first time starter, the six Foresters for him. I like the old Forester yep. as a first time starter. The uh, trainer doesn't have huge success with first time starters, but she's one for 14. The one was a huge price when he won and I like the way this horse is bred and I'm using that horse. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm using the three but Robustius just simply because I feel like this is a horse that, again, you've got a little bit of speed and I think speed goes a long way, particularly in these kind of races where yeah. you don't have any killers right now. It doesn't seem like. Maybe right. down the road you will, but I, I want to be able to have a horse that can be forwardly placed. I'm going to use the six Foresters for him. Uh, Katarina Vasilieva, I agree with you. Not necessarily huge, prolific with the first-time right. starters, but she's capable of getting him ready to go. And you get Hernandez, which is never a bad thing. And as just kind of a bizarre horse, I threw the seven Nupa Godi in there just simply because this horse has taken money in each of his past mm. three starts. The blinkers go on, and I wonder if here I am saying I want to have some speed. If there ends up being some sort of barbecue up front, which yeah. I, I don't think there's going to be, but if there is for one reason or another, I think the blinkers are going to make this horse a little bit sharper, hopefully get him not coming right. from 100 out of it. Yeah, maybe yeah. he's only 50 out of it. And maybe he can take advantage. Again, they, they've been betting him like he's yeah, supposed, to, supposed to be interesting. <laughs> and he's going to be a number here in this spot. So three, six, and seven for me in the nightcap of a $300,000 guaranteed late pick four sequence. It starts with race number 10. Race number 10 happens to be the big one up at Woodbine Saturday, Sunday afternoon, I should say. That is the Queen's Plate. $1 million is the purse. Scheduled post time for the Queen's Plate. Again, Sunday afternoon, the late pick four sequence kicks off 536 Eastern. Good luck.